We have okay. to now quickly go to the next speaker. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Kumar Shanmugam. Professor Kumar is currently a reader in composite and additive manufacturing in James Water School of Engineering at the University of Glasgow. Prior to moving to Glasgow, he was an associate professor at Khalifa University, Abu Dhabi. His research interests include mechanics and material design, additive manufacturing for energy efficient and sustainable applications. He serves on the editorial board of International Journal of Adhesion and Adhesive and a scientific reports. Today, he is going to give a presentation on multifunctional performance of engineered composite enabled by additive manufacturing and nano engineering. Let's welcome Professor Kumar. Professor Kumar, good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Rakesh, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Zil Lubenau for the invitation to present my work in this excellent workshop. Um, in this talk, I would like to give an overview of my group's recent and ongoing research activities in the area of tailored materials and composites enabled by 3D printing and nanoengineering. Primarily, I'm going to focus on, focus on additive manufacturing enabled polymers and polymer composites for a multitude of applications as these materials are very relevant to Sabic and Aramco. So um, with this note, I just would like to just uh, get into my topic. So my group's research activities centered around edit manufacturing can be broadly classified into three main categories, uh, performance multi-layers, bio-inspired design of materials, multi-scale and multifunctional fiber composites. So I would like to show you a couple of examples for each of these categories. We also explore some emerging materials and concepts such as color changing composites, we call camouflage composites, architected and metamaterials, nanomaterials, and 4D printing. So if time permits, I will also show a couple of examples for each of these categories. So here is an example of you know, material tailored multi-layers enabled by multi-material additive manufacturing for enhanced mechanical performance. So as a material scientist, we know that the strength and toughness properties are antagonistic and they don't go hand in hand. So uh, in this work, we kind of realized a tri-layer assembly with an interlayer whose elastic properties are kind of tuned along the bond length. So we kind of tuned the elastic properties in two different ways. One in fine discrete chips as shown in the left-hand side of this figure, but also we tuned the elastic properties of this interlayer, um, you know, mimicking the cortical bone microstructure. As you can see from this video, you know, for a particular wall infraction of a compliant material within the bond layer, you could achieve both strength and toughness properties. Um, in fact, we kind of looked at uh, this particular problem uh, also theoretically and computationally. Um, um, I think um, in addition to material tailoring of the interlayer, we also investigated the benefit of compliance and morphology tailoring of substrates and surface uh, tailoring of the bond area of the substrates. I am not going to show you the details here, but just I would like to mention that we just not only explored tailoring of the bond layer, but we also explored other uh, tailoring, tailoring strategies. So uh, I must say that this has relevance in two different con contexts. One, so in, it is useful in the context of joining of materials even 3D printed, joining of 3D printed materials, but it's also relevant in the context of a design of you know, the interfaces in a layer by layer additive process. So with that note, I would just would like to move on to some of the examples we explored in the context of bio-inspired material enabled by multimetal 3D printing. I'm sure most of us know what is a nacre. It's a, a iridescent, uh, you know, brittle material. If you look at the micrograph of this she shell or nacre, you have brick mortar structure. Essentially, the bricks are stiffer and the surrounding uh, biopolymer is softer. So um, although the nacre has nearly 95% of the brittle aragonite and only 5% of the biopolymer matrix, still it exhibits a wonderful combination of strength and toughness properties. So therefore, people have tried to emulate the architecture of the nacre to design advanced materials. 
So there are several strategies to kind of develop, uh, you know, nature inspired materials. In this particular example, we kind of use the idea of compliance tailoring or stiffness tailoring of interfaces I've just shown you in the previous slide to tailor the properties of the soft mortar, uh, you know, between the bricks so that we could, uh, you know, incorporate, in, uh, we could engineer strain tolerance into the system and diffuse stresses away from the stress concentration zones, particularly away from the um, brick corners where you have stress singularity and so on. So, uh, you know, uh, as you can see in this video, we explored two different cases of tailoring compared to the baseline one, which is, you know, um, you know, uh, brick and mortar with uniform properties, the mortar with, uh, you know, tailored properties or compliance gradients along the bond length exhibits, you know, improved strength and toughness properties. So now I will move on to a different class of composites we call, uh, you know, color composite. And primarily we developed these composites for optical transmittance to switch and tune opacity of the composites in a controllable and reversible manner. So the idea comes from the aquatic animals like octopus and, and uh, cuttlefish. They receive signal visually and transmit signal neurally to the smart skin to enable color change. So in the first row, what you see is an optical switch in which we kind of embedded opaque parallel platelets into a, an optically into an optically clear PDMS matrix. Then we kind of fix the block at the bottom and applied shear on the top to allow the light to pass through. But in the second row, what we call optical dimmer, we essentially uh, combine uh, dye particles, micron sized dye particles with the optically clear uh, silicone kind of matrix. And then we stretch these films mechanically to uh, enable the light to pass through. So in other words, these devices are really mechanically actuated and we could really control the optical switch, the sort of optical transmittance in a uh, reversible and you know, uh, tunable manner. So uh, it, it has a number of applications, even you can think of strain sensing. If you put this material on the skin and depending on the strain experience by the skin, the color can change. So it can be used as a strain sensor as well. So now I will move on to fused filament fabrication uh, of uh, peak material. I'm sure many of you are aware of the peak. It's a high temperature thermoplastic. It's semi-crystalline polymer, and it processes at about 345 degrees centigrade. Therefore, usually processing of fused filament a peak by fused filament fabrication process is difficult. So on the other hand, people have looked at the selective laser sintering of peak using peak powder that is doable and easier, but it's expensive. So in this particular study uh, in 2018, we explored FDM peak, uh, you know, to just look at the basic mechanical characteristics as a baseline study for our, uh, you know, seminal work on nano-engineered peak, which I will talk about in the next slide. So as you can see, the FDM printed peak, you know, kind of, performs on par with the molded peak in terms of mechanical properties. But then we developed nano-engineered peak filaments incorporating carbon nanotubes, graphene, and so on. And we 3D printed scaffolds for biomedical applications. And we explored the influence of sulfonation and, uh, you know, and incorporation of carbon nanotubes into the filament uh, peak, uh, you know, on, you know, the so-called bioactivities of these, uh, you know, peak uh, scaffolds. And we also looked at other polymers like PLA to kind of, um, you know, um, minimize the antibacterial activities. So, so I don't want to go into the detail because uh, it's not very interesting, except the fact that you kind of, you know, uh, tailored this material, locket the material with 3D printing and that allows you to kind of arrive at higher uh, performance. So uh, maybe this may be of interest to most of us, uh, 3D printed fuzzy fiber multiscale composites. Uh, you know, there are literature and, uh, uh, you know, Brian Wardle and John Ott at MIT in 28, 
they came up with this idea of anchoring carbon nanotubes on the microscale fibers, essentially to improve the interfacial properties such as the shear stiffness and fracture toughness. As you know, these conventional microscale fiber composites, they can fail at the interface between the matrix and fiber, or it can also fail between the plates. So we thought of what, I mean, why don't we kind of try this idea to 3D print this kind of multi-scale composites and see uh, you know, if it is doable. So we kind of use this regular multi-material photopolymer 3D printer to 3D print these kind of uh, you know, fiber, microscale fiber with the architected fins or anchored fins. And as you can see, depending on the orientation of the fin and geometry of the fin and so on, you see change in mechanical properties. But we, although we didn't go very far beyond this with, in terms of 3D printing, we kind of explored this problem uh, theoretically and computationally. Okay, I, I think the previous uh, talks talked a lot about morphing and actuation, so I don't want to go into the detail, but just would like to give you just brief idea of what we have done. So in principle, there are two ways to morph the structures. If it's a soft material, you somehow induce non-homogeneous strain field into the system. If it's hard material, you can really follow the, you know, kind of approaches, uh, you know, followed by Japanese arts like um, origami and kirigami inspired approach. So in here, we introduce non-homogeneous strain field into the system by tweaking 3D printing process parameters and then thermally programmed shapes. We looked at a bunch of thermoplastics, including high temperature peak. So um, with that, I will now move on to uh, some of the work we have done on architected 2D lattices for energy absorption. So the big picture, if you look at the Ashby chart, the Young's Marvelous with density plot. So uh, the existing materials occupy the chart in, in this region, as you can see. But then the best material would be the one which can occupy the uh, chart in, in this left-hand side top corner, which they call hole. So if you have a material which has higher stiffness but lower density, that would be very desirable. Of course, the uh, earlier cellular one, there are several ways of doing this, but one of the ways is by just in making the uh, materials uh, porous. By incorporating pores, you kind of lose the weight, but at the same time, unfortunately, there is a coupling between the porosity and the macroscopic property. Therefore, the aluminum foams, what you see here, because the pores are the pores are stochastic in nature, you also lose the property it's like the Inks model is here in addition to the density. But then there are several ways to, you know, introduce periodic pores at different length scales to really fill this empty space which we call hole, and we can also incorporate multifunctionality. I'm going to look at some of the approaches we have taken in this regard. So we know that the honeycombs are the excellent energy absorbing materials. So in here, we took this 2D honeycombs, single scale, single material. It's printed in only one material, and it's at millimeter length scale, say. What we have done is simply we kind of tailored the wall thickness of the honeycomb, and then we, kind of loaded these honeycombs under compression along the Z direction in which you have the thickness gradient. As you can see in this video, for a non tailored wall cases, you have a global buckling and that's not a desirable failure mode. But on the other hand, if you really grade the wall thickness, you would kind of mitigate this global buckling failure mode and this uh, structure starts wrinkling slowly and progressively leading to extraordinary energy absorption capacity. It's not too fancy, it's just a tailoring, a geometric tailoring at the macro scale. But interestingly, we have shown that this particular honeycombs tailored at the macro lens scale can exhibit energy absorption efficiency as high as 90%, whereas the practical micro-architected fancy materials can rarely exceed 50% structural uh, energy absorption efficiency. Okay, so this was done under quasi-static condition, but then we wanted to see the same tailoring works under, you know, the uh, so I mean the and under the low elastic impact loading. So you what you see the video on the left hand side is a non-tailored one. As you can see, it globally fails. On the right hand side, it exhibits progressive wrinkling and failure. So this is even, I know, 
this idea works even in, under low velocity impact loading condition. So now I will move on to 3D metamaterials for energy absorption. I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm sure that all of us are familiar with what happens to a solid when you introduce pores into, uh, when you introduce macroscopic pores into a solid. Usually you have a coupling between the porosity and the macroscopic property. But then if you introduce uh, you know, order, introduce pores in an orderly fashion at the micron nano length scale, what we call metamaterials. In here, we kind of decouple the usual coupling that exists between the porosity and the macroscopic property, such as stiffness, strength, and so on. So in here, we are trying to use this kind of met metamaterial architecture and combine multiple materials to introduce multifunctionality and so on. So Initially, I will just show you a couple of examples of um, micro-architected mechanical metamaterials where we did not look at any other functionality. These are all some of the examples we 3D printed. And here is a video which shows, you know, uh, the synchronized load displacement curve and deformation maps for a range of different architectures we have explored. It's beautiful and it is realized at the micro online scale. So obviously you can really tune uh, the mechanical properties substantially by just tuning the architecture at the scale. So we also looked at uh, uh, the mechanical behavior of a different class of uh, metamaterial we call plate lattices. So these are all meso-architected uh, metamaterials. We combine preliminary or elementary plate lattice structures uh, in different proportions and kind of explore their low velocity impact behavior. As you can see in the performance map, the specific energy absorption is you know as a as some of the metallic materials, although it is made of just some thermoplastic polymer. To be specific, it's made of polypropylene. So this is just a pure polypropylene, neat polypropylene. So, but we again engineered this polypropylene uh, with uh, carbon nanotubes and made filaments and again 3D printed this kind of plate lattices, hybrid plate lattices, and explored the low velocity impact behavior. Interestingly, although it is polypropylene with carbon nanotubes, and you can see it performs on par even better than some of the nice uh, metallic, uh, you know, plate lattices. Okay, so uh, and our interest is to really explore the multifunctionality, and some of my work is in still review. I don't want to talk about that. So this work received some uh, attention, and I will move on to now electroconductive composites for self sensing, including strain and damage sensing of bulk and cellular structures. So it is an example of carbon, short carbon fiber incorporated uh, peak composite. So essentially these are all 3D printed structures. The top row corresponds to the knee peak and the bottom row corresponds to the carbon fiber peak. As you can see, uh, the knee peak performs in terms of mechanical property, the knee peak performs wonderfully well, uh, particularly for hexagonal case I'm, I'm talking about. So on the other hand, for the carbon fiber reinforced peak, the mechanical properties are very bad under uh, quasi-static loading conditions. We'll talk why and uh, you know, what later on, but then now let's move on to uh, the outer plane loading condition. So uh, similar trends are observed actually, um, although there is a minor difference between the mechanical properties of the knee peak and carbon fiber peak, but this difference is not significant, unlike the case of out in plane loading condition. So now what is that we are primarily interested in this problem is the piezoresistive behavior. If you carefully look at this video, as you compress this, you know, samples, the resistance of the sample, electrical resistance to the samples increases because, you know, these ligaments, they kind of fail and folds form and, uh, crush bands develop and the crush bands percolate because of the percolation of the crush bands, when it completely densifies, it becomes fully conductive, right? So, and this we use as a measure of measuring the institute deformation and damage. So, and uh, that's what happens exactly even under out of plane loading condition, of course, the piezoresistive behavior is slightly different. So here is an overall picture of what happens under in plane and out of loading conditions. So essentially, um, both are topology dependent and they exhibit pronounced piezoresistive behavior. But I would say under in-plane loading, 
because these ligaments can easily bend and you know break and these folds can form crush bands can really percolate and so on so the piezoresistive behavior is primarily dependent on the percolation of the crush bands under outer plane loading condition this is not primarily due to percolation of the crush, crush bands but also due to the change in uh, electrical resistance of the wall material under compression so with that note i just would like to uh, move on to the behavior of the in-plane and outer plane 3D printed carbon fiber peak composites, cellular composites under, under ice strain rate loading. As you can see, um, I would say the carbon fiber peak exhibits extraordinary increase in peak stress and energy absorption capacity compared to the uh, neat peak under high strain rate loading condition. So with that note, I would like to now move on to conventional strain sensors we explored a range of different thermoplastics incorporating conductive nanofilters uh, and demonstrated their ability to really sense a large strain both under static and cyclic loading. So, uh, and we also looked at um, self-sensing knee implants, essentially high, high ultra high molecular weight polyethylene with carbon nanotubes. It's part of a you know, project we had with a Massachusetts General Hospital in the Harvard Medical School. So uh, I'm going to show you one example of you know, how we use metamaterial architectures for thermal management. So it's an example of a heat sink application. So we just made some architectures with polymers. And although these polymers are very low conductivity compared to metals, and as you can see in this plot, the heat transfer rate of these uh, you know, heat sinks made of polymer is comparable to the, the, the aluminum uh, you know, uh, uh, materials. So um, now I, as a last example, I would like to show some of the architectures for energy applications, batteries and supercapacitors. So as you know, um, in batteries, if you use a solid electrode like uh, the dense block, lithiation becomes very difficult and this limits the capacity and life and so on. So as you go down from micro to nano length scale and make introduce pores, you increase the surface area and also this increases the uh, lithiation. Uh, this facilitates lithiation and because you introduce pores, it also provides strain tolerance. So therefore you can prevent uh, you know, failure of these electrodes due to volumetric expansion and degradation and so on. So we kind of uh, looked at this problem and developed our own feedstock using specific um, um, you know, active materials and um, you know, 3D printed this uh, architected electrodes and demonstrated the higher specific capacity and cyclability. So uh, we looked at uh, lithium ion batteries. We are also we also looked at lithium sulfur batteries. So I'm not going to talk about details here though. So uh, um, another uh, example for multifunctionalities of these kind of nanoscale materials. So we used PU foam and adsorbed graphene crystals and created um, graphene. Uh, PU foam, graphene crystal PU foam, and then we carbonized it to get a skeleton. It's a 3D architectural structure, but it's very fragile, so impregnated PDMS, and we explored this for both sensing and supercapacitor applications. So uh, just to uh, complete my talk with a quick note on modeling, although we I showed a lot of work on only you know, experimental things, but we did a lot of modeling. I didn't really show those the details. So here is an example. You know, electroconductive composites are very important for a number of reasons, and particularly for self-sensing and strain sensing and so on. So we really looked at a bunch of thermoplastic polymer with CNT and so on. Oftentimes we observed segregation and uh, agglomeration of carbon nanostructures. And this is expected as you, even in other manufacturing process, you can expect segregation and agglomeration. Of course, we can control the segregation and agglomeration of CNTs to some extent uh, with a specific manufacturing method. In the 3D printing we use, particularly we use the FDM here, we observed all these things. So although we could measure experimentally what is the effective electric conductivity, we want to really uh, model these uh, to calculate the effective properties, electrical conductivities of these composites. So we combined a Shelby theory with Mori-Tanaka mean field homogenization and uh, predicted 
the effective electrical conductivity for composites which exhibit segregation um, agglomeration of CNTs. Of course, uh, our initial model has some simplification, so we moved on to something else, and we are also modeling piezoresistive behavior now. So uh, just in a nutshell, so we model hybrid composites to um, calculate their effective electrical properties, combining CNTs and short carbon fibers. We also do MD simulation at the nanoscale uh, to really evaluate the macroscopic properties of you know, the multiscale composites, which has both carbon fibers and you know, carbon nanotubes around the uh, microscale carbon fibers. We also explored a little bit of atomics-based continuum approach to really um, model this, uh, you know, things that, um, you know, nanoscale where we kind of treat this carbon nanotube as a space frame structure, equilibrating the potential energies to the strain energy, and then use that information to do microscale homogenization, and then use that for uh, structural applications and so on. So with that, I just would like to show you some of the references based on the uh, content I present now. And if you are interested, please write to me. Or, uh, and also we received some press and recognition for some of the work we have done. And I would like to thank my collaborators, uh, former and present members of my group and funding agencies. And I would like to finally thank you all for your uh, patient listening and, and thank you. And if you have any question, I would be uh, happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kumar. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. We have uh, one question from Sophia. Uh, I can read the question. What is the fiber aspect ratio and the volume fraction of CF in the CF peak? Okay. Yeah, uh, the volume fraction is about 30% by weight. And I think uh, the aspect ratio, if I remember correctly, it's somewhere between 100 to 300 microns. It's not uniform. Okay. Oh, sorry, somewhere between 200 to 300 aspect ratio, right? Okay. And uh, I have one question as well. You just show the thermal conductivity of that polymer, which is quite comparable to that of metals or quite high, like. Is it in the bulk structure or is it a small one? I didn't understand it quite well. No, so is it uh, relevant to the thermal management problem? Yeah, related to thermal. Oh. Actually, the architected structures I have shown are essentially photopolymers and they have very low thermal conductivity compared to metals. Yeah. But uh, what I have shown in that particular plot is the heat transfer rate per unit oh, okay. mass as a function of the thermal conductivity of the materials. So, although this polymer has very low thermal conductivity, but in terms of the heat transfer performance, it's on par with the aluminum counterpart. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation today.